Hey guys, so today I wanted to go over a list of kind of trying to help normalize watch pets. It's kind of, I don't want to say frowned upon, but it does seem like it is um, pretty uncommon to have pets that you don't interact with a lot. And I have quite a few of those. And I want to talk about the difference between having like a watch pet, having a pet that's like afraid of you, being hand tamed versus like enjoying interaction and enrichment. So I have a list of stuff here I want to go over. Um, so if I look down, that's what I'm going talking about. Um, one big example is my mice. A lot of people really like interacting with their mice and holding them and playing with them. And I don't know. Um, and in one of my cage tours or cage cleaning videos, I mentioned that I don't really interact with them that often. No one like came at me or anything, but I just was a little bit surprised and I noticed that it's kind of a sore subject having pets that you choose not to interact with. So I am going to talk about that. Um, the, this is going to include my mice, my robo hamster. Um, my leopard geckos, my toke gecko, my frogs, of course, but that's kind of known. You don't really touch frogs. Um, and then, like, my arboreal geckos, like my crested geckos and gargoyle gecko. So, first thing I want to talk about is the difference between having an animal that's, like, hand tame versus, like, comfortable with handling. So, all of my animals I can handle, like, for being able to take to the vet or doing health checks or helping get stuck shut off for the reptiles. All of them, Dexter's kind of a little bit, um, but for the most part, all of them I can, hand, like, I can handle. They just don't like it. It stresses them out. Um, I guess if I put in a lot of time and energy to be able to hold them all the time it's something they would get used to but I just don't see the benefits of doing that when it's not really adding anything to their lives um none of these animals that I just listed particularly want to be held it's not like they are trying to actively get out of their enclosure um I hear a lot of people say that like well my crested gecko is always trying to climb out of its enclosure like okay well, mine doesn't. Um, also, a lot of times when animals are trying to constantly escape their enclosure, it's more because they don't have the appropriate size enclosure or they don't have enough enrichment. And so they're trying to get out to stimulate their minds or to, to find something better. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. It's not like it's not like one, I'm afraid to touch my animals. That's not it. I just don't think it adds to their life. And two, I can in this situation I need to. So I just wanted to point that out first. There is a difference between having like a watch pet in the sense of being able to in emergencies or in certain situations handle them and help them out versus like just handling them for fun. And none of those animals I listed particularly enjoy being handled for fun. One of my mice, um, October, she does come out and she like likes to be held, but she's the only one. And it's not from lack of trying. Like I have given it some time trying to hand tame and none of these animals are afraid of me either. They just don't particularly want to be bothered, which is totally fine. Um, I don't mind. I also wanted to talk about or, so my second point of topic is providing adequate space beyond needs for enrichment. So what I mean by this is kind of I touched on it when I was talking about the first part is a lot of animals will try escaping their enclosure if they're not provided one adequate adequate space or two enough enrichment and things to like preoccupy their time. So if you're going to have a watch pet, you need to make sure you go way above and beyond providing like space and enrichment and things to do and making sure you're really vigilant on instead of like giving that animal attention giving that animal things to occupy their attention which is something that I'm totally fine doing like all of my leopard geckos are in 40 gallon front opening tanks they all have um loose substrate they all have different things um depending on their individual needs I guess um but like lots and lots of foilage and things to climb. So like in Smidge's cage, Smidge loves to climb. 
So I made sure she has loose substrate so she can dig. She also does like to dig a lot. And then she has lots of stuff to climb. She can get all the way to the very top of her enclosure and it's all secure, it's all safe, and it gives her a lot of stuff to do. Um, so that's kind of what I mean. And then same with the mice, like they have their cage is packed to the brim of stuff to do. I always like switching out different like dig boxes. They currently have a planted dig box in their enclosure. Like you just have to be really, really on top of providing that extra, extra effort if they're not going to be getting any sort of enrichment from you. So the next thing I want to talk about is ensuring that social animals have cage mates. So this, uh, my mice is a great example. I also have my white tree frog, um, who I got as a solo frog. I adopted it, um, but I am growing two babies up so that it can have cage mates because I do think that they do better in groups, not that they necessarily have to be, but um, so making sure social animals have cage mates because if you're not providing that social interaction, they need to be getting it from something. And even if you were providing it social interaction, you can never do the same things that another animal of their species can do. So you really want to make sure that if you have a social animal, it's really important to give it cage mates to be able to preoccupy its time. But like it's extra super important if you're also not going to be interacting with it on a daily basis um, that you're doing that and just to reiterate like this is these are animals that don't require or seek after like interaction with me so like my ferrets of course I play with them for hours and hours and hours a day my cats I interact with them for hours and hours and hours a day my Syrian hamster the one that I have in my foster care, I make sure I interact with her every single day because those are different types of animals that just like human interaction. The Syrian hamster thing is kind of wishy-washy because there's definitely Syrian hamsters that don't like human interaction and that's just who they are, but a lot of them do and um, Sky definitely benefits from just that little bit of extra interaction and enrichment a day. So the next thing I want to talk about is having it, having an animal as a watch pet, especially if you're not putting in hours and hours to make sure that they're 100% comfortable being taken out, eliminates stress because like that animal, that's their home. That's where they know. That's where they feel safe. And every time you take that animal out, whether it's 100% confident with you or not, it still causes a lot of stress, especially if there's other animals in the room or in the house or if there's other people they're not familiar with. Like there's just so many stressful things outside of their environment that you can't replicate, like even in a human hand. Like, like if we go back to Smidge, for instance, she has so much foliage and things to hide and places to go and just like so much security when I take her out of my hand she's just wide open so she's not afraid of me by any means like she doesn't mind being held it's just the sense of security of being in their own environment and then taking them out for your own personal I, it just seems selfish to me like if the animal's not if you are 100% sure you're providing accurate like space and enrichment and they're still wanting to come out like that means that the animal's wanting to interact with you and if they're not doing that and you're like going through and digging through their house trying to find them just so you can hold them, it just seems selfish to me. And I want to try help normalizing having watch pets because it's something I didn't even realize wasn't normal until I started having a little more interaction on my YouTube videos. Um, so I would just like to normalize it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting to interact with your pet. Like I said, if you put in the time a lot of animals can get used to it I just don't think there's anything wrong either with not interacting with your pet in the way that most people conventionally think you should um the next thing I want to talk about is knowing your animal I kind of touched on this with like Syrian hamsters so some animals are awesome with handling and some of them are not like like that specific animal based on the personality. Like for instance, I had Cleo, my other, my previous hamster. 
Um, she did not really like being handled. I could tell it just stressed her out. Like she wanted to be back in her environment in her cage doing her own thing. Um, she never bit me or anything, but it just wasn't something she preferred. Whereas Skye, I can open the cage and she's just ready to come out and play and hang out. And it's not like I'm doing anything different in the care. It's just the personality. Same thing with my leopard geckos. So like Smidge, Smidge is awesome. She will come out, hang out with me. I can hold her on my arm while I'm cleaning her enclosure. However, Dexter absolutely hates me. I don't know what, what I did to offend him. I've had him since he was a little baby, but he does not like me. And it's just like difference in personality. So like if I really, really wanted Smidge to be an animal that I could hold every single day and I thought it would really add to her life, it would not be hard for me to just make that a part of her routine. Whereas Dexter, I don't think it would matter how much I encouraged it. He just does not want to be held and I'm not going to force him to. Um, like I said, with all of these animals in emergency situations or situations when they require my help, I am capable of doing it. It's just not something I do on a regular basis um, because I don't think it adds to their life. Um, a next, The next thing is kind of going off of what I was just talking about. You don't want your pet to be afraid of you. So like I said, none of my animals are afraid of me. I can go in their cage and do whatever I need to and it's not like they're gonna run away and hide, which it makes it easier in situations where I need to hold them or do something, put them in a carrier, take them to the vet. I'm capable of doing that without stressing them out even more because they're hiding. So when I say I don't interact with my animals, I don't want you to think that I just have them in their cages and I don't ever do anything besides like feed them and give them water and I just don't do anything. I make sure that that they're comfortable with me being around their cage, in their cage. I don't want them to be territorial towards me because I do have to go in and do cleaning. I have to make sure they have water. I have to make sure they have food. I have to, you know, make sure everything's safe in their enclosure. I have to just make sure, I don't know, everything's good. I have to interact with their enclosure a lot. And so any of my animals, I can open the door and they're not gonna stop what they're doing because I'm invading their space. So you definitely don't want your animal animal to be afraid of you. The only animal I have right now that I'm still working on is my Tokay Gecko. I've only had him for about four months. He's a captive bred juvenile that I think was like a failed breeding project. Um, he is very scared, but that's also kind of a characteristic trait of Tokay Geckos. They kind of just are really skittish. So that's something I'm working on. But any of my other animals I've mentioned, like, it's not like they try getting away from me. So in the situation I do need to interact with them, I can. You should also know how to properly pick up your animals, especially if you don't handle them frequent enough for them to just, like, automatically walk onto your hand or whatever. You should know how to properly pick them up, causing them like most minimal amount of stress, whether it's scooping or like grabbing their midsection to put them on your hand or whatever it is, obviously it depends on the animal. So that's kind of all the points I wanted to talk on. I'd love to hear your opinions on having watch pets um, because it's something that, like I said, I never really thought of being kind of controversial or an issue before. And I do understand a lot of people love having their animals and love interacting with them. And I don't want anyone to think that the way the reason I'm like this is because I have quite a few animals that's not it it's not like I don't want to provide time to each of my animals individually even when I only had smidge or like only had branch I still didn't necessarily just desire to hold them all the time I don't feel like I have the animal so it can like enrich my life I have the animals so I can make its life better like my only goal in having these animals is providing as much enrichment and care and having the best care possible to give them a little like in like a little home for them to be completely self-sustaining in like I said obviously there are certain things I have to do like feed and water which comes with having any animal but I just didn't get these animals with the intention of having like a buddy to hang out with like I feel like that's why I have my cats, that's why I have my ferrets. I didn't get my reptiles or my amphibians to be 
like little buddies and friends that I could hang out with. I got them because I wanted to provide the best life possible for these animals. A lot of my animals are rescues and so I just wanted to be able to give them a better life than what they had. And I don't think that interacting with them every day is something that will enrich their life anymore. So that's kind of how I feel on the topic. I've been kind of putting off making this video because I was worried it was going to be taken the wrong way. And I really hope it's not. Like I said, if you want to have animals that you want to in interact with all the time, I'm not saying that that's not something you should do. They're your animals to each their own. I just want to kind of explain why I don't do that and also try normalizing it for other people that are like me um, because I did feel like kind of kind of discluded from the animal community when that's kind of how I just handle my animals. Uh, we have like a mutual respect, I guess. They're not afraid of me. I'm not afraid of them. I don't bother them unless they need to and vice versa. I just let them do their thing in their house. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Um, I know it's probably going to be a little controversial. I'm definitely not trying to start anything, but I just wanted to try helping normalize it because it kind of makes me feel awkward showing my animals and then people being like, well, why aren't you handling them or why aren't you doing this? And I'm like, I that's just not our relationship. Um, and I also wanted to make sure people knew that it's not because I'm incapable of doing that. It's just not something that's part of our routine. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please like and subscribe if you did and you want to see more animal content. Um, most of my, an my videos do have actual animals. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.